Alo me lava. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm going to do this video in English, and the purpose for that is the purpose of this video is to kind of introduce to um, I'm mostly assuming the English learner because most of the materials available out there for learning Burmese are in English. Sorry for any international person. Uh, uh, vielleicht bist du in Deutschland, willst du auch Birmanisch lernen, aber es gibt nicht so viele Bücher auf Deutsch, um Birmanisch zu lernen. So tut mir leid, aber sie müssen leider Englisch verstehen, um dieses Video zu, zu angucken. And if you didn't understand, that's no problem, because it wasn't addressed to you. Okay, so I'm going to talk about a few different points in the Burmese orthography that you will need to know. I'm not going to cover the different um, consonants in this because I did that in one of my previous videos. I know it kind of stunk because I didn't have this nice HD camera that has caused me a lot of stress today because I've recorded this video once before only to find out after I was done and editing it that it went into autofocus and decided to focus out everything that I wrote. So, yeah. That was a little bit of a time waster, but the show must go on. So, first I would like to address consonants. Burmese basically has two different types of consonants. One is unaspirated, the other aspirated. Now, a linguist would know what these terms mean exactly, but you at home might be thinking, what on earth does unaspirated and aspirated means mean? So, let's use English as an example. This is unaspirated. This is aspirated. You don't get it? I'll show you. D, T, B, P, G, K. I exaggerated a little bit, but it's a known test if you take a piece of paper and put it in front of your mouth while saying these things. So. Duh. Paper barely moves. T. You see that paper? It just flew. B. P. G. K. The reason why it moves like that is because when you're saying aspirated consonants, air is coming out of your mouth. Now a little air, of course, still has to come out, but not as not as strong. So, d, t, b, p, g, k. So, of course, Burmese doesn't look like this. Burmese looks like this. And that's Myanmar, the name of the language, country, people, anything to do with Burma, Myanmar. Or if you want to go the old fashioned way, Bama. I like to use Bama more, to be honest, but recently I've been speaking to many people who are from, directly from Myanmar. They grew up calling it this and they prefer to call it this. I prefer to call it Bama for personal reasons, which I don't really need to explain, but it's whatever. A very effective uh, linguist will change his register in order to speak with different speakers. So let's look at some Burmese examples of these consonants.
you have the very first consonant. And I'll write the name. And you may or may not be able to see the name, but that's okay. This is called Gaji. Gaji. And it literally means the great Ga. The great Ga or the big Ga. What a nice way to start off your alphabet with calling the very first letter, you know, the great Ga. So, second letter. This is unaspirated or unvoiced. Second consonant. Ka kwe. Both. Both parts of his name are aspirated. Ka ji. Unaspirated. Ka kwe. And this means kwe means to curve. So it's curved ka. And see, it is curved the way you write it. So, ga, ka. And you'll have other instances like with da wumbu and ta sin tu. Ta sin tu. Or like with um, ba gong and. Oh man, I cannot remember its name. I'll pu I'll put it when I edit the video. So, ga, ka, da, ta, pa, pa. Now the interesting thing about these. No, well if we take gaji for example, if we were to write it in English, I would still write it with a k, but. It's not a K. However, it's also not a G. It's kind of somewhere in the middle when you make the sound. It's not ka, it's not ga, it's ka, ka. You use the back of your throat in the glottis to produce it. Ka ji, ka kwe. However, this would be very much like a very hard English K. If we were to write it in the International Phonetic Alphabet, or it's a slant, we would write it as such. Boom, boom. Ga. Ka. Same with this. This is not a duh, but it's not a t. It's more like a in the middle. Duh, duh, duh. I don't know how to exactly tell you how to make these sounds. It's just because I've listened that I can make the distinction. Maybe even you, when I say it, cannot make the distinction. But the more you listen, it's the easier it is to hear. This, however, is an aspirated t. This one, though, actually. It depends. This one is kind of tricky because it depends on the emphasis, but we'll get into that later more when we talk about words. So I want to move on now, and I'll probably edit the video so you don't have to waste time watching me erase. Okay, now that we're done with consonants, let's talk a little bit about vowels. So, Burmese kind of has quite a few vowels. There's a vowel where you do not put a mark, as we know from gaji, for example. Just gaji, like that, is ga. But we'll get into more about that when we talk about tones. So, there's one where there's nothing there. There's one where you add ye cha. Ye cha. And then. Then you have longite, longite, and I forget what that part is called. I'm very bad where I know how to write things and I know how to spell things, but I've forgotten the names of some of the things. I know, I'm a horrible person. So, uh, 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 e, e, 
U U A O and then two special ones no actually there's more and Om Om Own. So, let's take these all and apply it to Gaji. Ga, ga, ki, ki, ku, ku, ke, ko, gang, ko, ko, ko. Let's do it to ka, kwe. Ka, ka. Actually, with ka kwe and several other letters, you'll have to write it like that. Ka ka ki ki ku ku ke ko kan ko ko ko. And so we will be covering these more in detail. This is just to kind of show you what there is. Now, everybody's favorite part. Let us talk about tones. This is a very unique thing about Burmese because there are, well, scholars say there are four tones. I, I kind of only think that there are three. But we'll, we'll get into that later. So, remember, for example, all the vowels. Let's just take, oh, let's do my favorite one. The E vowel, which would be this and this. And we'll apply it to everybody's favorite letter or consonant, Gaji. So here you would have Ki. Ki. Watch this. That's called Wusunalom Pao. I remember that name. Ki. 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 Let's draw a graph to show kind of how the tones are. So this one is kind of short. Ki. 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 Now some people would be like, wait a minute, shouldn't the tones be something like kinda like ki 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 or something like that. That's what you'd think. However, that's not how the voices work. And if you listen to Burmese people speak with these tones, they don't sound like this. They don't go they they just well, I don't know how to explain it. Let's um let's look at a sentence for example. Now this is definitely too advanced to show in this video. But I just want to prove a point here. So, in this sentence, we have with the short tone one, two consonants. But you're like, wait, this has the yi cha with it. Why is it a short tone? Well, that's because the alkamian, but we'll get into that later. Well, technically three. Not say la. 
nasya le lamala. So this would have the, I guess we could call it a normal tone. There's another way to call it. This has the falling tone. This also has the falling tone because they both have whistle lone pao. And this is normal as well. Nasya le lamala. Nasya le lamala. That's how you would pronounce it if you are being quite literal. However, if you listen to Burmese people actually talk, unless they're really being very, if they're unless they're really pronouncing it in such a defined way, you they wouldn't talk like this. They'd say, "Nasya le lamla," "Nasya le lamla." And you're like, wait a minute. They said, la, ma, la, or something like that. And really, I don't have a good explanation. I just know that's how they say it. So, as a learner, I should say it that way too. Not everything in language can be explained. Not everything has a rule. But these are the three tones. And in future videos, I will get into these tones and you will know them the last thing that I want to talk about is punctuation punctuation Burmese actually has punctuation however it's quite simple it's this and this. And it's pretty relatable to English. Now this one, traditionally in Buddhist scriptures, this would mark the end of a whole paragraph. So paragraph, doot doot, Modern day Burmese, however, marks the end of sentence. So let's just take the most basic Burmese sentence that everybody should know how to say. Nekaunla. Nekaunla. Or Nekaunla. Just, you know, like I said, people pronounce tones kind of differently depending on their mood. That marks the end of the sentence. Simple. Now what about this one? As you can see, I wrote a comma here. So, let's, let me give an example, because it's a very specific type of comma. It's not like, I was walking down the road, comma, then, comma, da -da -da -da. It's not like that. It's more like, tu, tu izane, tu me like me. This is a list. Item one, he, his girlfriend, and, this is and when making a list, not and, like, I went to the store and I saw this girl. It'd be like, I went to the store and the movie theater. So, we'll talk about that later, too. So, he, his girlfriend, and his mother... Are coming with are following literally so that is all I'm going to talk about for today I hope you've benefited a little bit from this very basic lesson and um, in the future I will delve more into these topics uh, in the meantime please 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 visit and support my blog that is whiteboylearningburmese.wordpress.com not .org I hope in the future I will have enough money to get my own server where I can do a lot more, have a lot more freedom. As for right now, I am a poor college student and I'm, you know, getting by. All right. Thank you so much. Now, Jesus, my